Working with route params is pretty much a must when you start to develop bigger websites, and especially e-commerce sites. When you have a lot of products or web pages, this is the way to go. What we've done until this point was creating a route program where we expect an ID or a string in the URL. And it works, but is that really what we want? If we expect a string from a user in the URL, why would we give them the opportunity to write down a string when we expect an integer, or vice versa? Well, probably just like you, I've watched the videos of Laracast as well. And the one thing that stood out to me was when he said, users are guilty until proven innocent. So what we could do is to prevent users to write down the wrong data type in the URL with the where method on a route instance. So let's hop back to our web.php file. Let me open my routes. Let's open the web. All right, let's start off with the ID that we're expecting inside our route. Let me add a comment, which says the pattern is an integer. What I want to do right now is to only let the user add an integer in the URL. Let's align this on the second line. Now, after the closing parentheses, let's add a point to the where function. And inside the where function, we need to pass in two params. The first one is the name of the param. And in our case, in single quotes, we want to refer to the route param called ID, which is equal to the ID in the get request. As the second param, we can pass in a regular expression which defines how the parameter should be constrained. If you have worked with login systems in regular PHP before, you might have used a pattern to validate phone numbers or email addresses. But for now, let's say comma, let's add single quotes, brackets, and inside the brackets, we want the ID to be in between the number 0 dash 9. All right, let's save it and test it out. Let's go to Google Chrome. Let's write down 9. So product 9 does not exist, and this works fine. Let's try out a string. So let's say iPhone. Welp, 404. The page does not exist. This is pretty cool, isn't it? But all right, there's one issue right here. In the web.php, we basically said that the number or the integer needs to be in between 0 and 9. So if we enter 10 in the URL, we're still getting the 404. And in order to fix this, we need to make a little change. So let's go to Visual Studio Code. In our where function, we basically need to go outside of the closing bracket and write down a plus sign, save it, refresh the browser, and this works. So right now, we're basically saying that it needs to be a number, but it can be more than one number with a plus sign. So a number is zero until nine, but 10 is two characters. So with a plus sign, we're saying that it can be multiple integers right next to each other. Whether you're an advanced programmer or not, this is something you will use a lot. And the same thing can be done for strings. So let's copy paste our method and comment. Let me get rid of the comments right here. All right. Let's say that the pattern is a string. Let's comment out the first pattern because we don't need it right now. All right. So we're doing a get request to products forward slash ID. Well, let's actually change it to name. Referring to the products controller class, the method show where, not the ID, but the name, has a pattern of, well, not zero till nine, but A until Z lowercase, A dash Z uppercase. Let's actually turn on word wrap. So let's go to help. Let's write down word. So let's toggle the word wrap. All right. So right now we allow a pattern as a route param with letters in capital and lowercase. But if you only want to have lowercase, you could basically get rid of the A until Z and uppercase. But it doesn't matter when you work with URLs. Now let's go back to the URL and change it to, let's say, iPhone. All right, iPhone has been printed out. Let's test an integer out, so 2234, and we're getting a 404, so it actually works. The last thing that I want to show you is how we could add multiple patterns. So let's say that we have an endpoint of, well, iPhone forward slash 12. So right now we need a pattern for iPhone and a pattern for 12. 
And this is easier than it might look because we could easily pass in an array in the where method. So let's do that. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's actually get rid of everything in the where. All right. Let's change the endpoint. So we want the name forward slash ID. All right. In the where method, let's add a set of brackets and let's hit enter. Let's set the name equal to, well, single quotes, brackets, A dash C, closing brackets, plus sign. Outside of the single quotes, let's add a comma. And then let's set the ID equal to brackets, 0 dash 9, bracket, plus sign. Let's save it. All right. Let's go back to Google Chrome. Refresh it. This works fine. But if we change the endpoints to 12 forward slash iPhone, we're getting a 404 because the pattern needs to be in the same order as the endpoints. 